So, so we have, oh. Go, go. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Philip Casco, and I'm here uh, co hosting with. Mike! Hello! Yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, before we start, just some basic introduction. Welcome to the Youth Room Podcast. My name is Mike. Um, I am 16 years old and I am a junior in El Camino. And yeah, I am your co host for today. <laughs> I have other hosts, like I said, Philip Casco. I am a junior, junior in college. I go to City College of San Francisco, and I'm trying to become an actor eventually. Hopefully, we get so far. Maybe you'll see me on stage. I'll get you guys tickets. So, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we see some. As you can see, there's some two other guests here. Maybe some familiar faces. Maybe some not. But would our guests, lovely, lovely guests, like to introduce themselves? First, um, hi everyone, I'm Stephanie. Um, been part of the St. Andrews Young Adult Group for maybe five, six years. I, I lost count, and yeah, it's it's been a ride. I'm still here, and don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. What's up? What's up, everyone? I'm Gino. Um, I've been part of St. Andrews since um, I think '94, '95. Um, had my first con first communion there and um, got confirmed there. Um, been part of the young adult group, youth group. Uh, helped teach confirmation. So been part of the St. Andrews community for a while. And uh, grew up in Daly City. And yeah, even met Stephanie there, my wife. So. Um, yeah, we've got a, um, got a lot of strong roots in uh, San Andrews. Hey, what's the, that, that's awesome. What the heck? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you guys been around that long. I, I honestly, not too long ago, I think three years ago I joined. So yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know where we're with the OGs. So <laughs> <laughs> it is an honor. I yeah, I joined it though. Steph's I been, uh, what? Well, Steph, when did you, when did you start? What year? Twenty four? No, not twenty. Twenty fourteen, thirteen. And Mike, you said, you said when did you start, Mike? I started freshman year, so I started twenty nineteen, twenty eighteen. Ah. Yeah, wow. I'm, still, I'm still a baby at this, man. <laughs> I got some years on you, but it don't, <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. But wow, it's it is good. a great honor to be with the OGs, with two very wise people who have been here and had I don't know about that but, <laughs> <laughs> but we've like, been around for sure that's still cool though in my opinion like that's I've really cool never Thank met you. like like OG so <laughs> yes. yeah I mean it's a long time so it's good to be good to be part of the youth still though I mean helping you guys out mm-hmm okay <laughs> before we start of course, with every tradition, we got to do opening prayer. So, would my lovely, lovely host take it away? Of course, of course. So, let us put ourselves in the presence of our Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for this, uh, for these awesome people that are here with us. Uh, I'm glad to be um, back hosting with uh, Mike and our two lovely guests, Gino and Steph. Uh, really awesome that um, we're just, you know, uh, gathered to just create new bonds, uh, meet these uh, brand new people. So yeah, let's just go into it and have some fun. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Okay, okay. So... Let's, um, you know what, I'm going to think of a little icebreaker. Yeah, let, let, let's start with that. So we, you know, like a little get to know you. So I got it. I got it. If you're to be in any movie, like it could be really old or like, you know, like really new or create your own movie, what would it be? 
or what would it be about? So you guys have two options, or you could do both. So let that let that sit sink into your brains and think. Did you so, say you already know? Yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead, oh, go right ahead, go right ahead. So here's this movie that you know I have watched countless times. It's called Times. It's called This Is the End. It's it, um with uh, what? Yeah, because I would want to be in that movie just because it looked so fun when they were filming. To be oh well, okay, whatever. It, it seemed okay. like when they were filming the movie from like beginning to end, they were just like having a good time. Like things just happened organically. They didn't really have like they had a script, but they didn't really go by you know a scene. It, they really just like freestyled the almost the entire movie. It seemed like, and I would love to be a part of that. They all are fun. All the cast members, um, Gino, help me out because I don't remember. Seth Rogen. James Franco. Like those, that film. Yeah. I would want to be in that movie. Yeah. Be involved. Is the question, wait, Philip, is the question, sorry, just to clarify, is it like oh, yeah. we want the movie to become our life or do we want to help create? What movie would we want to be a part of creating? It's or what, uh, movie? what movie would you want to be in or, or create yourself? Like, ah, okay, okay. Two options. Okay. I thought like, what movie do you want to be your life? Like, you know, like, do you want to, I thought she wanted, like, that's what I'm confused. I thought oh. Steph wants to be part of the apocalypse, <laughs> apocalypse or something like that. I was like, well, for me, it's Star Wars for sure. Um, Cause I want to be a Jedi hundred percent. Like, I don't know. Um, no, nothing would make me happier than to be a Jedi just to have a lightsaber. But that's me. That's a movie. God, I want to be in real life, like legit. So, if I could be a Jedi, I want to be a Jedi. Too late. I picked it for <laughs> Okay. Movie, though. So. so go ahead. <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I, I haven't seen This Is The End, but I heard about it because I, I really like James Franco. Because he's in Spider-Man. So, I don't want to be in Spider-Man because... Uh, right there you know <laughs> i've just always loved the character uh he's just so likable he's so relatable and i've just always wanted to you know swing around buildings and stuff like that and i honestly was about to say star wars but you hey that's all you i love i love star wars too i but, would have done spider-man too i was that was uh between those two <laughs> there's just such such like awesome things and if you ever get the opportunity to go to galaxy's edge I'd say take it because yeah. I, I, I built my own <laughs> lightsaber. The price wasn't okay, but I'd say it's worth it. <laughs> but yeah, Spider-Man. I'd want to be Spider-Man. Okay. So for me, um, I absolutely love Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki films. So they're like Japanese animations. I don't know if you know them, but I just love the universe, so if I would be in any film, it would be in My Neighbor Totoro because May is so cute and like I just want to hug a huge fuzzy Totoro and ride in the cat bus and like have all these cool fantasies, but yeah, I don't know. And if I would make a movie, um, I would probably like find a portal and go to like a dimension where like all the animals could talk to you and like you have to save the world and it's like hella cool and you have superpowers. I don't know. Cause like, I just like really kitty stuff <laughs> and like, you know, imagination and stuff. Cause life can be boring sometimes. Like I can't airbend, I can't do this, you know, but in films you can. So that's pretty cool. So I would probably just be in the world of my neighbor Totoro. Look it up if you don't know, because it's an adorable film. I heard of that film too, and I honestly want to watch it because <laughs> it seems cute. But man, that just made me want to watch. Like every time, like I talk about movies, it makes me like want to watch that movie, and it's just like, ah, like you know, like it's like I wish I wish I could live because God, special effects. And like environments, God, beautiful. Anyways, sidetracked. 
But um, transitioning into something, Mike, would you want to do our transition here into? I would love to. So we obviously come from different walks of life, not just age, but like, you know, our upbringing. And we all have one thing in common or like, more than one thing, we're all living all that, but we're all from St. Andrews and everything like that. But the difference between Philip and I and Gino and Steph is we're still youth, we're still in the beginnings of it in different perspectives. So I would like to ask Gino and, and Steph, what's it like after graduating high school, moving forward and everything like that? Like, what's it like basically taking the next chapter? Because as, a wee 16 year old it scares me i'm not gonna lie like the future scares me so what do you have to say about it well you're not alone (laughs) um i think life after high school is a scare for almost anyone who whoever is not scared i would love to meet them because it would be a huge surprise for me. Um, I think a lot of people like certainty. Um, They like to know what comes next. And when there's really no plan later on, you kind of freak out. Um, But, you know, that's where you really got to look within and really talk to the man upstairs and ask him to help, help guide you along the way it's going to be a journey and you know whatever happens god's going to put you there um whether it's something that you thought was going to happen or not um i thought i wanted to work in the fashion industry and i tried vis- um i majored um in visual communications with um at fashion institute of design and merchandising and I received my associate's degree at 20 years old. Um, It was quick and I thought I wanted to do that. Working in the industry, things flipped. And now I'm completely doing something else. So, you know, it's it's gonna constantly change and just go along for the ride because the more you resist and the more you try to take control of things is when it's gonna fall apart. So, you know, keep God by your side and, you know, just keep that in mind. Remember that. Well, for me, um, I definitely understand that concern, you know, high school in a sense is a kind of a bubble and um, going and stepping out into the real world, um, uh, the real world, they call it. It's, it is scary and it, it can be intimidating, but my journey was a little different. I mean, I was trying to drop out of high school. I really didn't, I didn't like high school at all. And it was a, it was a rough time for me, I think, um, going through growing pains and trying to adjust towards, um, you know, having to go through that routine of, you know, waking up, going to school, doing homework, all that stuff. And, you know, I was kind of pushing for more than just what the school was um, trying to teach me. And I think um, personally, I kind of look back now and it's like, I wish, you know, I had a little more of that um, experience uh, looking back in high school as far as, you know, just not having to worry about the real world stuff, you know, but uh, at the same time, it is nice to have the freedom to be an adult, you know, and it's something that is really empowering is once you're an adult, like no one's going to tell you nothing like you, you, as long as you're not hurting no one and you're not really um, stepping on any toes or anything, you have the freedom to, live your life and build what you want to build and do what you want to do. But it does come with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of difficulties and struggles that you will encounter, but you know, high school, they, they have difficult encounters as well, you know, with your friends, with homework, with teachers, with all the stuff that you go through. So struggles don't end. Um, They do get a little more, you know, challenging, but you know, you grow and you become stronger and, um, you learn, you know, from experience, um, you will learn so much. And, you know, as much as teachers and friends and parents, they want to kind of give you all the insight they have and have you learn from it. The only way for you to really learn is to experience life, you know, and that's going to be the greatest teacher 
that you'll ever have in your life. And um, in time, you'll see, like, you're just, you'll deal with it. That's all. <laughs> I feel like we're all still kids, you know, and we all are kids. We're all children under God. So uh, under that perspective, um, there's never a point where, like, I feel like I'm going to, like, full adult. I still, like, still feel some parts of being a kid. Um, I definitely have adult responsibilities and stuff, but I kind of try to keep that inner youth um, in in my spirit, in a sense, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's my perspective. That's cool. That's cool. I like I like your guys' responses. Wow, that's that's just that just like heck of made me think. Like, it's so funny. Um, I'm kind of, I guess, yeah. I'm <laughs> the the other day. <laughs> I was talking to Rajan actually, and he goes, yeah, you're kind of a young adult now. And I was like, dang, like, and I, like you, like I had that, like, like denial, like, no, I'm not like, I'm still, I'm still young and stuff like that. Like, I don't have a beard, like what? I'm currently growing one, but like, you know, it just makes you, makes you realize like how time can just snap and then it could be the next month. Like it, you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm here now. Like I, you could be like with whatever, like you could be like working, like, and like having your career and stuff like that. And like, that was all once before just a thought. And now it's just, I guess, reality. And so I guess I'm kind of going in to that transition. And I, yeah, like, like what Gino said, or like, we're all still kids at heart in a way. Like we're not gonna, I don't think we're not ever going to get rid of that. Like, kid within us because you know it's such so it's what makes us who we are today you know in a way so I just thought that was interesting when he said that and I was just thinking back to when I when I graduated and after that like I would go to I would like you know be in college you know going to classes and stuff like that and be like oh it's practically just the same thing different classroom different teacher it's not like that at all <laughs> at first few weeks it is yeah but then you start to notice like, oh, no walking in the halls with my friends, no eating lunch with my friends. Oh, new people. It's, it's a cycle. I feel like it's constantly just a cycle. You, got, you get that with elementary, you get that with middle school and high school and then like college. Yeah, you do the same thing, but it's kind of like a step more. It's like, oh, we're going to do like something else this time around. So I don't know. I would go back to my old high school and like try to try to like, you know, be in that like you know little bubble again and it you for some reason you just you can't connect because you're not there anymore you know what i mean you're not there in that bubble trying to like oh yeah like this is happening or like you know you try to get into the drama but that's not that won't get you anywhere that's not gonna get you anywhere and that i i thought at the time like i thought oh yeah maybe still being in high school you know like still having that bond I mean, sometimes, yeah, you, you can, you can still have the bond, but you gotta, you gotta keep going. Like there's no, there's no staying in one place because sometimes you, you won't get anywhere. And I, I finally learned that. And now I'm just like, well, dang, like, I just gotta, I just gotta keep it going. So that's my thought. Um, adding on to that. Well, I mean, I can't really say. <laughs> But I remember when I went to LA Congress 2019, there was Father Mike Schmidt. He said something which is, life can never get easier. Life only gets harder, yet you get stronger. Which just kind of, well, it's easier said than done. And I think everyone knows that life is hard, but I don't think we actually understand the value of how much time is fleeting and how we go through things. Cause dude, life is hard. Like. The other day, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, did I ever think thank my body for just functioning? Or did I ever just, like, thank God for, you know, existing? Like, that's pretty tight. That's, like, really cool. And the fact that I could even, you know, open this laptop or even meet Gino and Steph online because COVID, but even be able to cross paths with everyone, that's pretty cool, you know? And as life goes on... Um, I, I've been told, like, I'm more mature for my age. Not really. I'm still a kid. But obviously, the way I was brought up, I had immigrant parents coming, and, you know, they always disciplined me and told me 
like their upbringings and because I'm the youngest girl and the baby I have to know but it really is true honestly like nothing really changes it's just like your environment and whatever God throws you you know just trust it just like go with the flow dude yeah So, anyways, that was really that. Wow, that just wow, that just so much like information just got thrown right now. That was crazy. Just made me think about. Sorry, I'm gonna keep going. I just realized, like, man, I got a job too recently. I mean, well, I don't have a job right now, but like before when I had that job, it was just like, wow, I'm, I'm really doing this, you know. <laughs> I'm really no, you're good. <laughs> like it's just. I feel like once you get your job, like your first job, that kind of like hits in a way too. Sorry, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> it was your first job, Phil? Yeah, I started in December. I was actually working at the Museum of Ice Cream. I don't know if you ever. Oh. Remember. Yeah. Is uh, there ice cream there? Yes. There okay, is. I was. I've seen people just taking pictures there. I never see ice cream. It's but. a lot of people taking pictures. People are like, I just want to go for the pictures. And I'm like, well, okay, you're going to miss out on this really bomb ice cream that we have. There is ice cream. Okay, good. There is ice cream. <laughs> we have. No, I mean, if you want to, I think the shop is open, but I haven't applied okay. back. But there, the ice cream's not that bad, honestly. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's, so you're working there now or no, no, no longer working there? Not anymore. I'm currently looking for a job but when i was working there it would just it just made me think like dang like i'm really and even that job was strange because it wasn't like retail and stuff like that it was kind of like entertaining guests like i felt like i was just like on stage like honestly which is pretty cool so it was a lot of life (laughs) it was it was it was a lot there was a lot of things to deal with it was like okay don't go here or don't do yeah there was a lot of rules but in the end like i had fun with it and although people were strange, it was just like, it was just fun. It was a lot of fun working at, at that place. But now, like, I think they're going to have virtual tours. Oh, wow. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> hey, they'll make it work. We're making it work. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. That's true. We are making it work. But just like, I don't know, if you were, if you were to go there one day, which I definitely recommend you go when this all blows over. But um, I know New York is open, but, you know, San Francisco is closer. <laughs> so, yeah. Mike, you don't work? I wish, but I was, supposed- <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to work this summer, but, you know. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate part. The stuff we miss because of this pandemic, but. Yeah, but it's all right. Um, I was supposed to work with some kids, like, summer camp leading and everything. Uh. And, like, you know. I'm pretty cool with that because kids are kids, you know, and it's like, you know, a good thing to teach. But honestly, I'm glad that I didn't work because it really did give me time to, you know, just focus on like, where am I in my life as a person? Because during COVID, like I lost faith with God, like you can't really go to youth group, you know? So I'm like, how do you move on from that? And honestly, I didn't even know who I was like personally, like, I never knew that I was really good at growing plants until now. So, I mean, it's a blessing in disguise. But honestly, if you think about it, everything is. Yeah, no, knowing yourself is one of the hardest things, like, you'll ever do. I think we also look learning more about ourselves, you know. It's a continuous process, so. For sure. Um, it's going to take a while for all of us. <laughs> Where do you work, Gino and Steph? Steph, I'll let you start. <laughs> um, well, I am uh, a project coordinator for a um, company called Jit. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> the cats in the backyard are disrupting the dogs, but you know, well, you might um, take this one, yeah. Okay, well, I'll start then. Um, I'll go after. So, um, yeah, so sorry about that, Zoning Buster. Um, okay. Those are our dogs. So uh, I, I teach mixed martial arts. Um, I have an academy in Daly City. So um, my um, school, 10th Planet Daly City, some of you know, um, you probably see it driving around the area. 
Um, but yeah, it's my full time gig now. Um, uh, after high school, I mean, I've done a bunch of jobs. I was in, um, I was a lifeguard, did security, did um, worked at a kind of a imitation Chuck E. Cheese at one point. I've been a DJ roadie. I've been a, so I've been a lot of things. So um, a lot of experience with um, working. Um, but right now my full-time gig yeah, is, is running my academy. And um, right now it's interesting since um, COVID's happening, we don't get to do the training uh, as much as we uh, would like. And, you know, my line of work is the opposite of social distance. So um, you're not going to be able to uh, do much of the stuff we do without it. Um, or with social distancing, but you know we're rolling. Um, it's it's still um, the art I love, and I still have a uh, good um, amount of students who are sticking with me, and um, we're still uh, rolling. But right now uh, the academy is closed uh, for classes, and I can't operate classes. So we do some sessions outside, and um, you know I do my best to accommodate for all my students because uh, people during this day especially need to take care of the health and mix uh, martial arts. Um, it's not um, intended just to, you know, hurt each other, but you know, really for health and fitness and really to stay in shape. So most of the people that I do train are looking for that, and uh, I try to accommodate for them. So um, there are a select few that compete, and, you know, I coach them as well. But, you know, with a lot of the community that we see, it's uh, people who just really want to try something new, who are looking to challenge themselves and trying to break up the monotony. But, yeah, I've been doing this um, – for a good amount of years and um yeah i mean took maybe five six years before i was doing it full-time i was just doing it as a side gig and as a hobby in the beginning but eventually made it um to a career with the help of some friends and um, my business partners and um steph and my fam my family especially uh, but yeah that's what i do so uh pass it on to steph hey. okay sorry about that Will. um so well um I don't know where I left off, but uh, right now I'm a project coordinator for a company called Jones Lang LaSalle. They're, it's kind of boring, but commercial real estate, um, you know, our, but the cool, <laughs> the cool thing about it is that our client is Google. So, you know, um, I work with space planning. So a lot of the space planning within the Google offices in San Francisco, um, so, I mean, that's my full-time job, but I mean, I've been blessed with, you know, um, I started teaching yoga. Um, I've been practicing for maybe 11, 12 years and I received my teacher certification not too long ago. So, you know, started teaching classes over in the local studio at, um, in Pacifica. That's kind of why I have to be up at four am tomorrow morning uh but you know what it's worth it um it's my second home and you know it's it's so fulfilling um i wish i did it sooner than later but you know what it was god's plan and his plan is perfect so yeah that's kind of where i'm at right now what else do i do <laughs> No, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, um, also, his employee, if you want to add that. Oh? Up. <laughs> I'm on his payroll, so I'm technically his graphic designer. So I still hold some skills from art. School. She made this. Yeah, I made that logo behind. But yeah, that's, that's cool. Example. That's a bad example because the printers. But don't just 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 leave it. Okay, it's fine. They don't need to know <laughs> about the details. But yeah, that's the that's the logo. She made. She helped me with a bunch of these logos too. So. I'm here at the gym right now, just, uh, but yeah, she helped me out with that. Hey. That's sick. Yoga that's and martial arts. That's awesome. Martial arts and yoga. Oh my gosh. Too Come cool. Together. Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> you get yeah. Steph and Gino. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. I like asking, this is just a me thing, but whenever I meet someone new or whenever I know someone, I like asking them this question, so if you're cool with it, you can answer, but throughout your whole life, what's the most valuable lesson you've ever learned? Hmm. Probably um, just um, the two greatest commandments have to lean with the love, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor uh, as you love yourself. Those are the that's the greatest um, 
commandment uh, that Jesus has given us. And I think that's the greatest lesson any of us can uh, take to heart. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, I think most of the things that um, I try to take in as far as like, um, you know, taking advice from people and it's, it's always, um, it's always going to be, be uh, depending on where I'm at in life. You know, I've, I've had, I like to, I like to, you know, learn from other OGs uh, and people who've been through life and experiences. And I, I try to just, you know, learn from others mistakes and learn from their advice and learn from other people's successes as well. So, um, but yeah, the, the greatest commandments, I think that's um, one of the things that keeps me grounded is like understanding that we need to love each other first and foremost. Um, and, you know, loving yourself, loving God and loving others, that pretty much covers the full spectrum of, uh, you know, what we need to do in our lives. But I think that's it for me. Steph? There's actually two that comes to mind. Um, one The first one is knowing that your life is a gift. It's a privilege, not a right. So don't take things, anything for granted. Um, Literally everything in your life is a blessing. And even though I forget it multiple times, um, life is a right. God gave you this life, so use it wisely. And everything that you do, really try to reflect his image. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now that growing up as growing up in my teens, I was spoiled. I'm not the person I am today. You know, I thought that I deserved a lot more than I really did. And I had to learn the hard way. And learning the hard way was such the biggest, it was the biggest blessing. Um, yeah. So it's a privilege. Not a right. Um, I forgot my second one. <laughs> so maybe we'll just leave it at that. At that. Um, yeah. It's, if I remember, I'll definitely mention it. But yeah, that's one of the biggest lessons that I have learned. Um, you know, if you want to learn the hard way, go for it. You know, it's not going to make life easier. But the point is, if you learn learning from your mistakes, and growing. I like that. I like that. That was deep. <laughs> but hmm, that's like a really good question. Oh, Mike, good one. But um, I think like a really like valuable lesson. That's a valuable, right? <laughs> um. My grandpa always used to say this, or like he like still always says this. It's like, don't worry, be happy. I don't know why. He just always used to say that to me. And I used to be like, okay. And like ever since like he just said that, and I know it's like from a song, it's just something that like has kept me at ease. Like, you know, that's like calmed me down. And like, like it's, it's refocused me into Got it. <laughs> to uh, when I was, um, oh my God, did I lose it again? No, I didn't. No, I got it now. Okay, <laughs> I got it. Uh, it's refocused me to what I want to do in life uh, to become stronger and to just always get back up. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like what Steph said, we're always, always learning from our mistakes. And it's something that's, gonna be around like forever i mean i I feel like i don't know i mean i don't know the future but i i'm pretty sure like mistakes are gonna happen like regardless like no one's gonna live like a perfect life like oh yeah look at me successful like no like i honestly don't think it's like just a smooth smooth road like no there's always gonna be like obstacles coming at your way that are in a way just lessons Everything is just a less like an important lesson that God is always sending out to us. It's not like, it's not like he wants us to suffer. You know, it, it's not that like that at all. It's something it's to better ourselves, to become that stronger person to what we are 
today and to 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 what we are going to become later on. There we go. That's what I. That's my best. There's no challenges. There's no growth. Exactly. Exactly. Um, for me, it's the difference or the differentiation. Whew, big word. But the difference between happiness and joy. Because I think what we all, because like happiness is fleeting, because that's the point. It's an emotion. Um, because when I was 12, I think, I was like diagnosed with like, you know, depression and all that. And mental health, which is like totally fine. And I'm a huge advocate for that. And especially now with like COVID, dude, like Black Lives Matter, police brutality, wildfires, like the sky was literally orange. Of course, we need to keep our mental health like in check. But what I feel to realize is that like, whenever I get sad again, or whenever like, I'm not happy, I get so mad. I'm like, dang it, of course, it's gonna leave. Like, when can I be happy again? Which is like, like my mental, like, um mentality at that time but the thing is it's like it's an emotion it's supposed to be in motion you know sadness is gonna end and start again happiness is gonna end and start again anger but the thing is is joy is everlasting which means you're at peace and you're you keep your eye on god so um instead joy is when you're sad but you know that you'll be okay or like you have to tough it out and before, I used to be frantic and be like, oh my gosh, is there an airplane, like, going by right now? <laughs> That's like tradition. That always happens. To Every me. time. There's always an airplane. There's <laughs> always an airplane. Because I live near, yeah, anyway. <laughs> but it's gone. But the thing is, it's like joy is everlasting because you're, you're closer to God. And I think my biggest lesson that I've learned so far is to always just keep your eye on God. Like, no matter how far you're going to drift, even right now, like, not going to, I'm going to be totally honest, my faith in God isn't the best, but at least I know that I'm going to accept my emotions and accept where I am right now to know that I'm going to be okay. Tying back with everything, it's all about growth. Like, of course I'm in this place. Of course I'm in this position. Like, why am I not supposed to? I'm here for a reason. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. Dang. What the heck? So many deep answers. I love it. <laughs> but um, I, too, have a question. And it is, um, I have two in my head. I'm going to pick one, see which one I'm going to go with. Ah, yes. So, what is a certain hobby that you guys have been like doing uh, during, you know, this pandemic and this whole craze that has helped you like connect back to God or just something that, you know, that has like keep you, kept you busy that like, that's like, Oh, like, I didn't know I could do that before. Like, just like a, like, so, like you've discovered a talent that like, ha uh, that you never knew, like, you had before and now it's like you're like an expert at it let that let that sink well, i wouldn't say expert but um definitely meditation so i've gotten in the habit of taking 10 minutes aside in the morning to meditate and really connect with myself um it's really helped me um it's helped me through a lot. I mean, I don't like to say it too often, but COVID is a blessing in disguise. And it's a life-changing event for me. Um, I feel like I'm coming out of it stronger and more, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like solidified. Like my foundation is more, it's, it's there. And my feet are to the ground and I am, I'm here standing and I'm stronger than I was before. Um, you know, it really has helped connect, connect my mind with God and with, with life. Um, so it's, it really helped me dig a, a bit deeper within to see what, what needed to be resolved. 
in just those 10 minutes a day has been a game changer for me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking further into it. I'm planning on taking a course in October to really just like explore that and um, see how further I can get with it. But yeah, meditation, it works. So I don't know um, if I've picked up any new hobbies. I feel like all I do is a bunch of hobbies. <laughs> uh, but um, for me, I think um, one thing that definitely has picked up 100%, which we're doing now, is doing Zoom calls and uh, talking to people on FaceTime and getting more used to video conferencing and, and trying to touch the base with, with friends who I haven't seen in a while. So it was always kind of just like, um, you know, let's, why are we going to video chat? We'll just go meet up one time and we'll just, you know, but I feel like it's become more and more prevalent to check in with people and, you know, talk to them, get that FaceTime with them and, and really connect um, even virtually, you know, at, cause it's the only option we have, you know, so not being able to connect with people physically in person was a big issue that I was dealing with in, the, in like in the beginning is like how are we gonna like we're all just gonna be lo lost souls wandering around <laughs> because we have no human social interaction and people are social beings you know we're meant to be in tribes we're meant to be around each other and we really need that energy to survive and we need to work together uh, to, to make sure that we are okay so um, I think doing like these calls regularly like for example my kids class that I teach um, um, I, I'm like in the first few weeks, that was like my, my life saving, like, uh, activity because like I was, I was very upset, you know, being, having to close my gym, having not, not be able to do what I do and everything. And then getting to see my kids like jump on zoom calls and cracking jokes and then jumping around, even though I'm telling them to do like stuff that they wouldn't normally do, but they're more than happy to do it. Cause you know, they're kids and they, they, they love life. And you know, as long as you make it fun for them, uh, they'll do it. So taking that, energy of you know just um using the tools we have you know virtual calls and calling friends up and and, and even family i've even you know on, on the unfortunate other end of the spectrum you know um I've, I've had to attend funerals on on zoom and that's like it's a great tool i mean just because the fact that we couldn't be there presently uh, because of the planes and, and you know we had shut down travel and everything just being able to see them through um zoom and you know doing uh uh, wakes and doing, um, you know, uh, memorial, uh, is that memorials or, uh, I'm not sure if I got the right word, but, um, you know, those kind of events through zoom and through uh, video calls, it, it was a powerful tool. And I think we're just going to get better and, um, going to have more abilities, to, uh, to use these tools. But yeah, I think that's a huge thing that I've been able to utilize during COVID is, uh, FaceTime video calls and, you know, stuff like this. How about y'all? For me, I mean, I've always been, like, I'm literally writing down points that I'm learning right now, but, like, journaling, because it's, like, keeping me sane, dude. Um, every retreat, every lesson I put down here, every rant, oh, my gosh. If anyone held this journal, honestly, I'm cool with it, because, like, they get to learn, too. But, yeah, um, besides journaling, is there another airplane? Anyway, dancing. Oh my gosh, I'm not the best dancer at all. But like, I take dance class in school, right? And like learning capoeira or like Brazilian and like hip hop. I never felt so cool. Like just utilizing my body and grooving because I'm uh, not going to lie. Like, I'm not the best at chemistry. I'm not the best with math or science. Like I pull through, at least I hustle. But whenever, like, it's dancing or something, learning like that, like, there's something in my brain that clicks and, like, excels at it. So, yeah, I love dancing, and it's fun. And I get exercise, and I get to groove, and, you know, I get to love myself. Like, I get to actually like the body that I'm in, and that's pretty cool. So, yeah. And even when I'm, like, sad or anything, I just, like, you know, turn on the Alexa and, like, put my jams, and I just dance by myself in my room. And it releases a lot of serotonin. So, yeah. Nice. 
Uh, shoot, for me, quite a lot of things too, honestly. Um, praying every night is something I started to do a few months back, I think, and that's helped me a lot feel more relaxed than like I feel like like you know tense like oh my god what's gonna happen you know like the next day and stuff like that but I'd say praying every night has helped me a lot to just connect more back to God to um lip syncing is something I really like to do I really just love doing that because oh ideas for lip syncing yes that's what I've been doing because I don't know it's just I've been coming up with, like, I have these ideas when I'm just like, okay, I'm eventually going to do them. And it will happen. It will happen. Look out for that. But, uh, yeah, I think that's something I like to do a lot. Creating scenes in my head or reenacting certain scenes from, like, my favorite movies is something I, I enjoy to do. And, um, oh, dog. <laughs> but, uh, it's so interesting. Uh, it's so interesting that Steph said COVID is a blessing in disguise because that's just so, it's so, it just, I was like, oh, snap. She has a point because, you know, my mom comes home really late from work and we used to like always just like watching movies at night, but usually she'd come home tired and like, she just want to go like sleep, like cook, sleep, and then go on to her next day and, now that it happened, like, like, we've been, like, we've been able to, like, you know, bond more. Like, I've been able to show, like, video games to her. Like, recently when uh, The Last of Us 2 came out, <laughs> that was just a game, like, I never thought she'd get into, which was really funny because she doesn't really like gore. But that's besides the point. The point is, like, we got to bond over something. Like, I got to just, like, explain everything to her. We would have conversations. We would make theories and stuff like that. It was just, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of fun, you know. We just have, like, a lot of fun together. And it was just nice to share moments. Like, I got to see, like, my sister work, too, because she's a teacher. And it was just nice to see how, like, how she, like, rolled, like, with, with her kids so and like i got to meet some of her kids like in before you know covid and then seeing them now like just seeing them like oh my god because i would teach i would actually funny enough i would teach them dance from performances that i would do in high school so then they would just be like oh my god like you're famous which i'm not really but like to them it was just nice to see them like to see their faces light up so that was just a lot of fun to do when during, yeah, I did a lot of things in quarantine that I never realized. Like, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't realize I could, like, do that before. So there's that. <laughs> I got one. Um, one last question, maybe, possibly. I don't know. But... How do you stay in touch with God moving on from youth group? Or how do you still continue to keep your faith strong, like, right now? First, um, I literally treat God as a best friend. I mean, I talk to him all the time. I mean, like, I was in the yoga studio, and God was with me. Um, earlier today and that's that's how I see our relationship you know like do the good the bad you know I think for the good sometimes I think for the bad because of the challenge it brings um but that's kind of how I've been keeping you know my relationship with God strong not saying that it's consistently strong obviously like we have our ups and our downs with our relationship with God our faith um, but as long as we continue to try to make that relationship better and push forward, even when our faith is low, all that matters to God is that you're trying. And that's how I see it. That's how I keep God next close in. Close to my heart, yeah. For me, um, I think God has always been a foundation in my life that I've 
acknowledged, um, you know, my mother was very strong um, with having me pray every night and it was like not an option, you know, you come pray and we prayed as a family at night and uh, we would go through our prayers, our fathers, all that stuff. So as I grew older, I, I, I strayed away from that format, but continue to pray and um, a good friend of mine, you know, which a quote I still live by today is that your life is a prayer, you know, and then you're always in constant communication with God, whether you like it or not, you know, your thoughts, God hears everything that you are feeling, uh, God knows and understanding that and just accepting that it's kind of hard not to have God in your life. You know, it's just knowing that God is making all the moves behind the scenes. God is going to be doing what, he needs um, to do for you and, and, and he's pulling the strings and kind of just submitting to that and just realizing, you know, I'm not in full control. And even though I want to be in full control, God knows better. You know, they, what's the quote is we make plans and then God laughs, you know, and then we think about all these things that we want to do. And we think about all the stuff that we attempt to do. I thought 2020 was going to be the year we're going to be doing this, that, and the other thing, but you know, look where we're at now. So we need to just remember that was no matter how crazy things get, no matter how great things get, it's, it's due to God and we got to show gratitude. And I think that was one of the biggest things is that no matter what, you have a bad day, give thanks. You have a good day, give thanks. Cause you had a day at least, you know, and just being able to wake up is a blessing being able to um, go about our day. And like you, like some of you said is uh, Mike said, I think is just to even like, acknowledge the bodies we have and all that stuff is all due to God. And the more we can, we can connect with that, that knowledge of God is always there. Jesus is there for us. Um, there's no way you can't have God strong in your life, you know, um, until you get to that point when you're at your lowest, you know, and you really need to, you know, dig. And if that's the only place you find God, then I think you're in a load of trouble for your life. You know, you got to see God everywhere whether you're um, doing great or you're doing terrible, but yeah. So it's a, it's kind of a given for me is like God is there no matter what. That was cool. Yeah, I like that. God, you guys have really good answers. Sorry. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> um, for me, um, what was the question again? Sorry, <laughs> pay it one more time. How do you keep your faith? There you go. Uh, yeah, I think. Okay. Trying to remember too. Um, usually, uh, I keep my faith through. Um, usually, when when we have some uh, these Zoom meetings or like whenever like we do a podcast or. Just like whenever they're having like whenever someone's having like a Zoom meeting or like I said, uh, how I pray every night or whenever my mom come home, comes home, I usually just pray the rosy with her. Like little little things like that that can, you know, really affect my faith in a really just grand, grand, more grand way, I think, is is my methods of how I keep in touch, you know, just talking to people about life and God too. And like, just, or how can I, you know, um, raise my faith, raises my faith. Or, did that make sense? How I can raise my faith, can raise my faith. There you go. I don't, I don't know if that was <laughs> English, man, hard language. But uh, yeah, that's, that, that's how I would, uh, that's how I would answer it. <laughs> <clears throat> For me, dude, <laughs> I don't know. Like, literally, I just kind of go with it, pray. Obviously, pray, keep the basis. But I think what's honestly keeping me intact is um, I'm, like, in multiple ministries. And, you know, I have responsibilities in each one of them because I have to lead in everything. And lately, I've been getting lost in the whole idea of leading, you know, um, in the basis of it, obviously I would be excited and, you know, would change lives and this, but now it's kind of like a responsibility. So I think learning the difference and just talking to God, like just communicating is what's really keeping my faith there. 
and meditating dude it's so like if you haven't just kind of taken silence and just let your mind flow or just kind of try to face yourself do it like the first couple of times it's hella weird like facing myself what the heck but dude like you're gonna you're the person you're gonna know for the longest what like your entire life you know yourself from your birth to your death and like of course your parents but you know no one knows you more than yourself or you're going to know or spend time with so spend time with the creation of god Philip, take it away. All right, all right. <laughs> Unfortunately, from a random source, I don't know what source. Uh, <laughs> that's all we have. The, that's they make it look so all the easy. time we have. Thank you, <laughs> you know, thank you so much. You should just host it. <laughs> but, um, that's all the time we have for today. Um, do you guys have any final remarks, final shout outs, anything at all? No, thank you guys for hosting. Um, young adult retreat coming soon. Um, hopefully you all, uh, all the young adults out there can join Steph. Um, love what you guys are doing. Continue to do, do what you're doing. Um, spread the faith, spread the love for God. And thank you for having us. Yeah, we'll do it again sometime. Thank you so much for like joining and like taking the time. I'm sorry that it like, you know, that it went like over time or anything, but oh, no worries. Great, okay. great conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mike, do you have any final things to say? Um, oh, uh, YSA podcast. He posts like once a month. Keep intact with YSA weekly Wednesdays. Uh, yeah. Closing prayer, Mike, too. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, that too. Okay. So, let us all put ourselves in the presence of our Lord and Father, Son, and Spirit. Hey, almighty, gracious, wonderful, funny God. Um, thank you for this really amazing opportunity for all these amazing people to share what they have and just be able to have you in our presence every single time but in my heart i know that you're definitely here right now um i'm gonna just say what's in my heart right now and what's in my heart is be grateful and just to realize the lives we have and the feet that we get to walk upon and it's a privilege to even know you god it's a privilege to even be able to have this strong of a faith to be able to talk and to be able to have a podcast like this. So I thank you, God, for everything. And I pray for guidance. And wherever walks of life we continue to, just thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys, so much again. And uh, one last thing, Gino, I want to show you something. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> eh, I just want to. Eh. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, oh, nice. Sick. Nice. 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 Very good. Steph's actually got a... Um, when we got married, Steph had a lightsaber bouquet. So. What? <laughs> we That's had, so cool. We had a, yeah, so it's good. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make one next time I'm at Galaxy, Galaxy's Edge. But, yeah. All right, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. I love this stuff. So, you know, we'll, we'll be more than happy to do it again. Thank you so much. I have a special request. Can we please see your dog? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's two of them. Zoe and Buster. There's two. Hold on, everyone. Hang tight. And then we'll grab them. Don't worry. She'll get them. Brother and sister duo. Yeah. Oh. Brothers and sisters. Zoe. Buster. Um, she's nine. He is seven. And... They're siblings, same parents, different batches. That's a good way to close it off. We're getting tired of proving.